this uh, Zoom yoga practice in the middle of COVID virus 19. And we're going to start this morning lying on our backs and extending the spine on the floor and just gentle knee to chest. So again, I'm drawing the knee into the armpit and releasing. And it's springtime in Asheville, so if you've been gardening a little bit like I have, <clears throat> you might feel a little tension in your hips. So there's always a way to just take the knee and make circles with the knee. Just kind of rotate around in one direction and then rotate in the other direction. And then release, change sides. Take the knee around one direction and in the other direction. All right. And stretch out again. And then let's go ahead and create some resistance. We'll push the knee away from the chest. Anchor the bottom of the belly to the floor. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're using the transverse abdominis. And with an exhale, swing the leg up without disturbing the pelvis. Inhale, exhale, swing the leg back down. Inhale, exhale, swing up. Inhale, exhale, activate the belly and swing down one more time. Just to start waking up the abdomen, waking up the leg. And then we'll switch, press the opposite knee away from the chest, anchor the bottom of the belly with an exhale, swing the leg up, extending the knee fully, and back down, and up, and back down. One more time. Using the breath, anchoring the lower belly, swinging up, and exhaling back down. And then release, so arms out to the side, pull the shoulder blades down away from the ears, rolling your collarbones back, extending the elbows, reaching into the palms, and we're gonna go ahead and add the arm expansion to traction twist. So dropping the knees in one direction, separating the feet slightly, dropping the knees. Extending from the hip to the knee and letting the head turn opposite the knees. Let the head turn so the neck releases. And then back to center. And then the other side. And let the head turn. Back to center, repeat. So dropping the knees in one direction, head in the opposite direction, arms reaching. And then back to center. And then the other way. Arms reaching, legs extending, and back to center. Very good. And now let's bring the knees into the chest. So we have the basic twist, or Jatana Parivatanasa. So we're gonna exhale, take the knees halfway over, keep the arms pressing into the floor, especially the arm in the direction. I'm not saying right or left today because I don't know which way you're going, but I'm gonna to go to the right now. That means I'm gonna press my right hand into the floor. And then back to center and repeat. Knees to the left, halfway, pressing the left hand in the floor to turn the top chest. And back to center. And last time to the right, pressing the back of the right hand. And back to center. And place the feet down, and then we're going to go ahead and take a belt. 
So my belt's right here on the chair. And I'm going to slide back on my back again and put the belt around the ball of my right foot. And I'm going to use my toes wisely. So I'm going to draw back on the little toe, press up with a big toe mound, and then straighten the leg completely. Reaching out for my left leg, I'm going to press my left thigh firmly on the floor. And I'm going to check to see how my hips are doing to see if I need to tweeze my right sits bone slightly in to balance three o'clock and nine o'clock across the front of my hips. And then from here, let's inhale deeply. And as we exhale, curl the head and chest up toward the knee and hold it for a 10 count. Five, four, three, two, and one. And back down. And then holding the belt in the right hand, externally rotate the leg, draw it up toward the shoulder, out to the side, without disturbing the opposite hip. And then inhale back up to center. Bend the knee into the chest. Give a little pull, ultimate knee to chest, and then release. And shake it out. So we're just trying to be kind to our hip joints, to our ligaments. So spread the toes, press the big toe mound into the belt, extend your leg completely. And then go ahead and extend the knee, extend the leg, anchor the straight leg to the floor, Check your hips, tweeze the outside of the left hip slightly in. So again, three o'clock and nine o'clock are even. And then inhale and as you exhale, curl your head and chest up toward the knee. Hold it for a 10 count. Five, four, three, two and one, and down you come. And then holding the straps in the left hand, externally rotate the leg, draw it up and out to the side. Keeping the right hip firmly on the floor. And then inhale, come back up to center. Bend the knee, bring the knee into the armpit to release the hip joint. And then slide the foot out and let the leg come back down. And shake out a little bit. And then we'll go one more round, taking the right leg up. Full extension on the foot, the knee, balancing the hips. And this time holding the belt in the left hand. And we're going to go across the body to the left. So exhale, over you go. Stack your hips, and then reach with the bottom leg. So the, my left leg is reaching, I'm hooking my little toe on the mat, extending my left leg, and then extending the right leg. Bringing the legs to the spine, and then slowly seeing if my body is ready to start taking the arm out to the side. This is my challenging arm right now sort of healing this arm, so I'm going to leave it above my head. And smooth, deep inhalations, exhalations. Keep extending through the right leg. Keep pressing the top of the right thigh away from the belly. So both legs are actively reaching. Soft throat. And then deep inhale. And pull the leg back up to center, bend the knee, and release it, and center your hips, and stretch your legs back out. And now from here, we're going to take the opposite leg up. Spread the toes completely, extend into the leg, open the back of the knee. 
Again, check your hips to make three o'clock and nine o'clock even so the sides of the waist are even. And then we'll hold the belt in the right hand. Take a deep inhalation. And as you exhale, come across. And again, stack the hips. Hook the little toe of your right foot on the mat. Stretch that leg completely. Extend the spine. And think about the top of the thigh pressing away from the belly and the belly lifting away from the thigh. Extend the left arm completely overhead. And then if you feel your arm is ready to start coming out to the side, you can begin to move in that direction. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. Extending both legs completely. Raising your breastbone as you inhale, softening your throat as you exhale. And then deep inhalation. Pull the leg back up. Bend the knee in toward the armpit. Release the leg. And return your hips back to the floor. So one stretch for the neck and shoulders. We're going to take the elbows slightly out to the side. We're going to bend the elbows. Press the elbows down into the floor. Lift the chin. And come up into fish pose. And broaden across the top chest. Feel the pressure in the back of the crown to the floor, the elbows to the floor. Let your inner groins descend. And raise your breastbone any amount. And then inhale and exhale and release and come back down. Pause, take a breath. Feel it work on the back of the neck, releasing the back of the neck. Even turn the head slightly side to side. I'm going to release the tension in the neck. Then we're going to do fish pose one more time. So again, bending the elbows, pressing down, lifting your chin, and coming up into fish pose. So pressing the elbows to lift the shoulder blades up. And I like to fan my hands out to the side a little bit, as if I were reaching my thumbs toward the floor. That helps me to broaden the collarbones and pin my shoulder blades. Hold it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And then back down again and release. And let the head turn side to side. And let's go ahead and do the arm turning exercise. We expand the arms to the side, look to the right palm. And then as the right palm turns over and down, we look to the left palm turning up and switch. So one palm up, the other palm down, and back and forth. One more time, back and forth, switching the palms. And extending through the neck and shoulders by turning the head. All right, very good. And then we're going to bend the knees, hold our elbows. Elongate our spine again on the floor. So a nice, smooth, extended spine. And then with an exhale, curl up as if to reach the knees toward your, sorry, elbows toward your knees, not knees to elbows. And hold it. Five, four, three, two, and one. And come back down. And let's do that one more time. Inhale deeply. And exhale, curl up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Then back down. And pause, take a deep breath. Inhale fully, exhale completely. 
And then walk your feet close to your buttocks, hips width apart, not too close, but close enough to get support from your legs. So you can be close enough to support your hips. And let's go to some Setu Bandha, some pelvic lifts. So inhale, let's first drop the inner groin as you inhale. Exhale, curl the tail and lift the hips. So we know from the psoas work that you want to release the psoas completely. And then inhale and exhale and come back down. So in the down neutral position, we're first going to extend the psoas by dropping the inner groins and putting that nice arch in the lower back. I don't know if you can see that, but there's an arch here. Right, there it is in your lower back, and then go the other way, so the lower back comes down, you curl your tail, and lift from there on the exhale, pressing heels into the floor, getting a good high lift, pause, inhale deeply, and then exhale, roll back down again. And let's go one more time, we'll add the shoulders this time, so inhale, drop the inner groin, Exhale, curl, lift, tuck your shoulders under one at a time, roll the shoulders back, now lift the breastbone toward the chin, and raise your hips up. And then hold the position if you need to for assistance, you can grab your mat, pull on the mat a little bit so you can really press your feet into the floor and get a stronger lift at your hips. And inhale and exhale and release and down you come. Extend your spine again. Pause for a moment because that's a good spinal curl. Take one knee into your chest. And then we'll switch legs. Take the opposite leg in to release any tension in the lower back. And then let's roll to our right and come up to a sitting position. Okay, so here we are now sitting, and let's come to standing. So we can get a little standing work in. So spread your toes, root your heels down into the floor, bring yourself into Tadasana by lifting the bottom of the belly, broadening across the collarbones. Pin the shoulder blades to your back body. And then inhale, raise your arms up. And exhale, down you come. And inhale, raise your arms up. And exhale, down you come one more time. Inhale, raise the arms up, big breath. And exhale, down you come. Let's go ahead and separate the legs nice and wide. And let's just do a couple simple standing poses just to get the energy of the legs up into the chest. So arms reaching out to the side, drop your shoulders, expand the arms, turn the skin of the arms back, turn the palms down. And then turn in part way with your back foot, about halfway or less. Turn out completely with the right leg, lift the bottom of the belly. So the bottom of the belly comes in and up. And exhale, lift the knee and bend. Reach out through the arms. And then inhale back up again. And let's turn to the other side. So I think sometimes it's good just to go in and out of the poses. Set yourself up, but then go in and out and see where your body is today. How is the bottom of the belly working? How are the hips working? And then back up again. And then again back to the first side. So now this time really be certain to lift the front hip up so that your sits bones and your 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock are horizontal. Yeah, so my shirt's pretty good. I think it's a good horizontal line. And then lift the inner front knee and bend. Mm -hmm. And then extend into the rear leg. So you get that nice opening on the inside of the rear leg. Even reach down from the outer hip down to the outer foot so the thigh doesn't collapse in. 
Yeah, reach down to the outer edge of the foot that way. And then inhale and up you come. And let's turn to the other side. So again, we're going to keep that, in this case, your left hip, my right hip. We're going to keep that hip lifted as we bend. So three o'clock and nine o'clock stay even. Lighting is interesting, isn't it? And then extend down into the rear leg, especially from the outer hip. Reach down to the outer heel, lift the bottom of the belly, and extend out. And then inhale up you come, and turn to center front, step your feet together. Pause for a moment, breathe. All right, so we're gonna go this time Let's step to uh, Virabhadrasana 1. So classically, we step the feet apart and then turn the feet, right? But if you're going to do that, remember you have to really turn that back foot in really far. So sometimes it's easier just to step forward and have the outside edge of the foot pressing into the floor. Mm -hmm. And this time, you want to keep this top thigh moving back. So it wants to collapse in. And you want to keep that really moving back. So really push it way, 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 way back. So you feel the inner groin travel back. And then see if you can bring your tailbone around and forward in such a manner that you get the lift of the bottom of the belly. Add to that the arms reaching up, extending the fingertips toward the ceiling, Lifting the palms from the back of the waist, rooting down into the rear heel, and then exhale, bend the front knee. And go for that nice extension on the front of the rear leg. Without losing the lift of the lower belly, keep the lower belly, especially on the left side. Keep that lower belly drawing in and up as you reach down into the right heel. So you get that nice big extension on the back leg. And then straighten the leg and turn and step out. So coming out gradually so the joints are made happy. And then we'll do the second side. So with the left foot turning out, stepping forward with the right, or vice versa. Again, press the top of that thigh back, 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 back. So you really get the knee open in two directions, down and up. You get that heel really rooted in the ground. And then bring the tail around and forward, lifting the bottom of the belly. Mm -hmm. So the tail is rooting down. Bottom belly in and up. Raise your arms overhead. And give a nice big length to the arms. Again, lifting the palms out of the lower back. Rooting down to the outside edge of the rear heel. And then exhale, lift and bend the front knee. So you imagine that you're lifting the front knee as you bend. It's a way of letting gravity help you. Mm -hmm. And again, maintain the lift of the lower abdomen on that side, the front side, as you root down into the outside of the rear heel. The sits bones still have a relationship, so those of us who have wonky, wobbly hips, you want to keep that understanding. And then inhale and out you come. Turn to center front. Step your feet together, pause for a moment. Take a deep inhalation and exhalation. And then let's go forward into Prasarita Padantinasana. Take your legs nice and wide. Turn your toes in. So the outer edge of the foot is parallel to the mat. My toes are spreading. 
and I'm lifting up the in, up the legs. So up, yes, through the quads, but also rooting down into the heels. And then tail down, bottom of the belly in and up. Hands behind your back. Roll your shoulders back and imagine a little fish pose. And then take your head up. Look up and back. And then hinge forward at your hips, coming all the way down. And bring your fingertips to the floor, under your shoulders to begin with. And stretch the legs so you're rooting down with the heels, lifting the top of the kneecaps way up. And then inhale, and as you exhale, release your head down any amount. Let the neck be loose. <clears throat> so loose in the neck as you go down. I'm lifting my head up so the camera can hear me. But you stay down with your head. Let your spine release. If you feel a lot of tightness in your knees and your legs, it's okay to pulsate. Bend the knees a little bit. Straighten them a little bit. Bend them a little bit. Straighten them a little bit until you find that even spot. Yeah? Okay. And then to come up, lift the head back up again. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. Use your spinal muscles. And with an exhale, you're going to pull your tail down to lift your chest, hands to your hips, and then heel toe in together. And pause. And take a breath. Okay, so one last standing pose. Let's do um, Prasarta Padottanasana. No, let's do Parsvottanasana. So we'll take the legs apart, turn the front foot out, adjust the position of the rear foot so both feet and hips are facing the narrow edge of your mat. Root down to the outside edge of the rear foot. Again, lift the bottom of the belly. And this time, lift the belly from the front kneecap. So from the inner knee, lift all the way up to the hip bone. So again, rooting down through the rear heel, lifting from the inner kneecap all the way up to the front of that hip bone. And then extend the chest out and forward as you go down, keeping the hips level. I like to use my hands on my lower back to tell me when my hips are even. So I find that good stretch in the hamstring of the front leg. Oops. And then almost fell over there. And then when you're ready, slowly release the head down. And then pressing down into the front foot, lift the chest and come up. And turn to center front. Step your legs in, pause a moment. And then we'll go to the second side, step the legs wide apart. It's interesting to find the stretch, isn't it? Turn in, adjust the back foot or the front foot or both until you have a little bit of space. Usually I think just the width of the pubic bone, just a little bit of space between the feet so I can easily turn the hips. Now anchor the outside edge of the rear foot. Again, strong back leg as in mirror one. And then lift from the kneecap in the front all the way up. So lift, 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 all the way up to the top of that hip bone. So you feel the pelvis become, what I say, perpendicular to the floor. Clock face is flat in the front. And then inhale deeply. Roll your shoulders back. Exhale, extend out over the front leg. And Start heading down toward the floor. Releasing your spine any amount as you go. Turning your hips as best you can to keep them parallel to the floor.
And then inhale, raise the head back up. And turn to center front and step your feet back together. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Okay, so if you have a chair handy, and I don't know if you do, so um, we could go to a twist on the chair or we can go to a twist on a bolster. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the bolster out right now just to have something to sit on so that I'm not sitting straight on the floor. And along with the bolster, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a block. So I have something for my back hand. So I can do a nice twist. All right, so sitting on the bolster, I have my right leg extended out, my left leg bent. I'm gonna turn my belly, use the block behind me to give me some lift so I can turn and get a nice twist. Mm -hmm. Starting here. So it's a variation of Mary Chasa, just the beginning of the spinal turn. And then back down, opposite side. So I'm going to turn belly and just lift my chest and start to rotate my ribs. So I'm trying to keep the extension of my spine, not to collapse it down, but to try and keep the extension of turning. This is very similar to what we would do if we were sitting in a chair. All right, and then release. And then go back to the first side. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and cross my arm over. So I'm gonna turn the belly, extend my arm up, the opposite arm, turn the ribs and the belly, elbow outside the knee, and lift the breastbone and start to leverage the arm to the knee to turn the rib cage. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And then inhale and exhale, release. And we'll go to side two. So again, turning some with the belly, but I'm going to extend the arm and use that arm extension to lengthen the spine. Turn my belly on the exhale, elbow outside the knee, and then leveraging the elbow to the knee to turn the rib cage. Gaze back if possible. Hold it. Couple of breaths, three to five breaths. And slowly release. And again, stretch both legs out. Pull the flesh out from under your sits bones. Place the palms next to you, lift your chest, broaden the collarbones back. Come to neutral, so we're coming to Dandasana, the Tadasana of sitting. Dropping the sits bones, lifting the breastbone, broadening the collarbones back. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And then let's take and turn the palms to face backward. And do the same action again, pressing down into the palms, lifting the chest, and seeing if we can get that extension through the front of the arm. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And release, and again this time, fingertips pointing forward, broadening across the chest, extending up, Inner shoulder blades down, straightening the elbow. That's a little tricky on the soft bolster, but I think you can still get some value. And then turn the fingertips in as if you're tucking your fingertips under the corners of your buttocks. Press down the palms, roll the shoulders back, 
lift the chest and then see if you can straighten the arms. Be gentle and slow with that. This is a good one for the forearm and thumbs because the forearm has to rotate a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting one for the forearms. Breathe smooth inhalation and exhalation. So this is sort of a fascia stretch of the forearm, muscles and fascia, all that soft tissue. And it takes time for them to release. We're going to stay for another couple breaths. And then inhale and exhale and let go. And pause and take a breath. So if your thumbs are feeling uncomfortable, the thing to do would be to fold the thumb in and grab over. So you take your thumb, fold it in, grab down, and reach the arms straight out in front of you, lock the elbows, and just do some wrist circles. One way and then the other way. This releases the tension in the wrists and the thumbs. Okay, and then interlace the fingers, turn the palms, and reach out. And then change the cross of the fingers. So the gripper becomes the grippy, turn the palms and reach out. And then release. All right, so let's go to Baddha Pajasana because I want to do a little, um, or we could actually do, um, Swasikasana sitting uh, and with the arm wrap. So let's do that. We can just fold the legs in. We'll make it simple. And if you still have your belt nearby, what we'll do with the belt is we'll put the belt right around the kneecap like this. So not way back here on the thigh, but way out as much to the tip of the kneecap as you can get it and still have it hold on when you pull. And then you're going to Draw the belt over to the opposite hip. From there, I'm going to reach my arm out, reach back around, and grab the belt as far back around as I can grab it. Open my shoulder back and take a hold of the opposite knee to twist. So this is a very nice uh, upper arm and front shoulder, yes, stretch. And then breathe. Nice deep breaths, giving the ribs a chance to stretch, everything a chance to open up. And then inhale and exhale and release. Pause a moment, feel. You might feel the blood coming back into your hand like I do, just to give it that a chance. And then we'll change the cross of the legs. So whichever leg was in front first, we're going to switch that and bring the opposite leg in front. And then we'll take the belt and put it on the opposite kneecap. And hold it to the side of the hip. And this side I don't think I'm going to do as well because I'm still healing my right shoulder. God bless us for all our funny joints. I'm not too bad today. Not too bad. All right, so I've got my hand in my waist. Lifting my chest, but that's as much turn as I, I'm getting on this side because of the shoulder limitation. So I'm just going to be patient and wait. Smooth inhalation. Smooth exhalation. I have to let the belt a little looser on this side if I'm going to get my chest lifted, so I'm going to do that. And 
And one, two more breaths. And then slowly release. Pause for a moment, feel. And then I think we're going to start coming to a close of this practice. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and place my, take my hips forward on the bolster. And then lie back so I can tuck my shoulders under and extend my legs out into a Setu Bandha. So you want to position your pelvis just right so you feel the stretch here at the top of the thighs and you have a little bit of traction in your lower back. So you don't want to crunch the lower back. You have to find just the right spot. So typically we have to move toward the head a little bit so that we can get the lower part of the um, pelvis in the right position and have the tailbone really supported to go in. So as we press the thighs down, the tailbone is, is lifting um, and, and in opposition to the thighs. Now for some of us this is easy peasy and it's just a subtle adjustment. For some of us it's a little bit more challenging. And then go ahead and reach the arms out overhead. Nice smooth deep inhalations. Smooth exhalations. And then interlace your fingers and just use your index finger to point. Right, just pointing with your index finger and reach overhead. And then wrap the outer armpits toward the ceiling. So wrap your outer armpits toward the ceiling so you spread the shoulder blades. And still curl the tail in. And see where you feel the stretch. What do you feel you're connecting? Connecting the dots between the shoulders, the ribs, the psoas running through from the bottom ribs to the groin. And deep inhalation and exhale, release those arms. Take them back down by your side. Again, tuck your shoulders under. And then we'll slowly bend one leg and then the other. And if you're positioned well on the bolster and you can find just the right spot so you're Clock face is flat. We'll take one leg in and then the other. So the feet come off the floor. And I'm going to extend one leg up and then the other. So I'm in Vipriti Karani. I'm in an inverted position on the mat, on the bolster. Uh -huh. And lightly lift the breastbone. And then have fun looking at those feet. Spreading your toes, looking at the inner arch, comparing the inner arch of one foot to the other, outer arch one foot to the other. And then try flexing the feet stronger and extending your inner heel bone up, which is always interesting. And firm the top of the kneecap. Let the top of the kneecap be really firm. And then from here, we could do a couple subtle variations of Vibhuti Karani, keeping the breastbone lifted. Slowly lower one leg toward the floor and see if it can touch. Take a breath there. Let the, that extended lower leg help you to open your chest. 
And then with the next exhale, pull on the lower belly, lift that leg back up. Wait there, inhale. Exhale, lower the opposite leg down. Reach out through that leg, keeping both legs extending. And then inhale and raise that leg back up. And then bend both knees. And place your feet back on the floor. Okay, and then from here, we're going to separate the feet a little bit and go back to Satya Bandha again to stabilize the hips. So inhale, ex get on the top of your shoulders. Exhale, curl your tail, lift your hips up. Hold it as long as you can. Let the muscles of the back body work. Observe in your own body which side is lazy. One side is always lazier than the other. Work with both of them. And then come back down again and pause, take a breath. And we'll go up one more time. So curl the tail. Press your elbows down and help you get that lift. Center of the heel, pressing into the floor. Sacrum lifting to the ceiling. And then exhale and come down. And pause. And then raise your hips up and just slide the bolster out from under you. Slowly return your hips to the floor. Lengthen out through your spine, so feel your spine releasing. And then stretch your legs out, walk one foot out and then the other, letting the calf muscles be soft and your feet drop out to the side. And then turn the palms up. So my shoulder blades are flat on the floor. My arms are not too close or too far, but the shoulder blades are flat, so the back of the neck is relaxed. And then close your eyes. Take a breath, feel your body. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. So letting go of the work of the poses. Surrendering to the floor beneath you. Relax in your belly, relax in your spine. Softening your back body. Relax in the space between your shoulder blades. Softening the back of your neck. Mm -hmm. 
Soften your eyes. Let your eyes release to the back of their sockets. Let them become soft and wide. And then turn your attention to the space of the third eye, the space between your eyebrows. And as you breathe in, breathe in the divine light. Feel it flow all the way into your heart, filling your heart. A long, smooth inhalation, long, smooth exhalation. I'm going to slowly come out of Shavasana. You can bend your elbows, bring your hands to your heart or your belly or both. Remembering that we can soothe our own emotional body by simply being present and connecting with our own self. And then go ahead and bend your right leg, place your foot on the floor, bend your left leg. And raise your right arm up, roll to your right side, and then slowly push yourself up to sitting. Simple cross-legged position. Namaste.